Welcome back guys, my name is Austin from AwfulMedia.com and this is part 5 of the Inventory Tutorial Series in Unity 3D. In this part we're going to focus on populating our slots with the items that are in our inventory. The way we're going to do that is we are going to create empty items in our slots as we've already done, so we've already done that. We have uh, empty items in every slot for every slot that we should be creating by getting the uh, rows and columns results if you multiply those together. We are then also though going to add a blank item to each inventory item so they will match the amount of slots that we have. And then what we can do is set the slots, say slots 1, to equal slots or item or inventory one that way the inventory is the slots represents the inventory and that'll make hopefully a lot more sense here in a second the first thing I want to do though is I want to set up a rectangle variable that will hold the rectangle of the slot so we have this here but later on we'll have to use this rectangle to draw our uh, our textures for our item icons and we don't want to calculate the position for each rectangle each time we do something with that slot so what I can do is I'll say rect I'll say slot rect is equal to new rect of course then I'll pass the values inside of this rectangle to that rectangle and I'll just make this the rectangle that it uses and that's the same thing, but now we have this result stored in a variable so we can access it later on without having to recalculate the positions. The next thing I want to do is do what I said with adding blank items to every slot in our item or in our inventory list. So I'll say new item just like we did up there. So now our slots list and our inventory list are the exact same thing. But what's good about this is now I can set my inventory slot 0 to be equal to an item from the item database. Slots will not be updated though until we wish it to be updated. And we can show the items in the inventory by showing the items in slots. And we can modify the items in slots without modifying the items in inventory. But we probably will still be doing that anyway so now that I say that it doesn't really matter about that. What I can do to start with is I can add an item to the inventory, but I can't say inventory.add item this item because then I'll add an item to the end unless I remove an item, add the item in that position, but then that item will be at the very end part of the list of inventory, and that's not good. So all I'll do is set a specific index to be equal to a specific item just for starting out so we'll have an item to play around with. I'll say inventory we'll start out with zero, is equal to, we'll go through the database and find some items that we've created. I'll go to zero, which I think is an amulet that we created. I believe that's an amulet. So inventory zero will be equal to uh, pff, amulet of prayers, I think I called it. So what this means for us now is that I can set slots zero to be equal to inventory zero. Now you can do this a whole different way. If you don't like the way I'm doing this, that's fine. But you understand why I'm doing it, so now you can change this to do it however you want to. You may find a more efficient way, you may know a more, a more efficient way, and that's fine. Do that. But I am going to be doing it this way. What I have created here is an index int i is equal to zero. You probably saw this and think, I didn't do that, why is that there? That's because I was testing, uh, testing doing this before I did it and didn't remove it and just now noticed. So what I have here is i equals zero. The reason I have a variable initialized here in the draw inventory is because I need an index value throughout this loop. So I have x would be, uh, it'd get up to four, and then each time that happens, this will get up to five. I don't remember the numbers, but it's something like that, right? But that never represents the actual number that we have looped through, the actual item that we are currently on. And that's a problem. So we will create our own index that we will increment manually. So I have int i is equal to zero. Here at the bottom, in the y, because y is repeated each time, x is only repeated like five times, right? So I'll say i plus plus, which is the same thing we're doing here, except I'm doing it here. So that means i will go up one each time. And the reason I am uh, setting up the variable 
outside of the loops and inside a draw inventory is because it does not need to reset until after the for loop returns and goes back through. So each time draw inventory is called, I will reset to zero. If I put it here, I will reset to zero each time the X or the, uh, the loop for X loops through. And that's not what we want. So now this should go up if we have 20 slots from zero to 19, which is what we want. So now I can use this to figure out what item we should be playing around with. So I can do an if here. Well, before I even do that, let's set up the actual slots to hold the items in our inventory. So I'll say slots i, i is the index that we just created, is equal to inventory i. So now the slots is pretty much an exact mirror of what inventory is. And now what I can do is check to see if an item is in this current slot at i, whatever i is. It'll be 0 to 19 every single frame, so keep that in mind, or every single frame that draw inventory is called. So what I have to do is check to see if slots i contains an item. How can I do that? I could say slots i is not null, but slots i will never be null because it always contains a empty item because we add one to it for each slot we have right here. So that won't work for us, but there is a cup there. All the stats within the item will be null until an item is added to it. One of those stats would be the item name. So item name will be null because when you create a new item using that blank constructor, that empty constructor that we made, it nulls out all the values. And one of those values is name. Well, you could use ID, you could use description. Make sure it's a, a stat that will always be applied to an item though. I mean, you don't want to add it uh, based on the strength attribute because not all things will have a strength attribute. So make sure you do it some, based on something that all items will have. So what we could do is say slots i dot item name, you could do dot uh, item ID, whatever, is not equal to null. So this is saying, as long as this current item or this current slot contains an item, do whatever's inside here. And the thing that I want to do is first, I want to draw a texture. Or we're going to go through the GUI class first. GUI class, draw texture. So this would take a rectangle position, a texture 2D, which we have with the item icon, and draw it at the rectangle position. The rectangle position that we want to use is slot rect. That was the point of storing that information in slot rect so that we don't have to pass it this and make it recalculate that for each texture as well. Just use the same position. So I'll say slot rect. I will then pass it the texture 2D it wants to draw. And that is the slots i dot item icon. You could do inventory i dot item icon. It'd be the same thing because that slot would also contain an item in the inventory slot. But, since we're using slots here and slots here, I'll just keep it the same. Now what should happen is when I go back into my game here and I click play, I should see, yeah I do, okay, so I see an icon because we have one item in the inventory and that item is this amulet. It is there where it should be and that's good. But, what happens if I add another item? Let's see. So I'm going to say inventory one is equal to whatever item in the database at one is, which I think is a t-shirt of some kind. Hit I, and well, and okay, well, it's there, but it's going down on the column instead of across on the row, and that's because the way we're generating our grid, we're generating it uh, here, and then one, two, three, and then here, then one, two, three, so it's going down on the index instead of across on the index, and that's not what we want. But you can see that they're both there, so, the one thing I can do to change that, and it would be quite simple, is come down here and I will reverse these loops. So I'm going to copy this one, come down here and paste it there, and then hit Control X on this one and paste it there. So now I have reversed the for loops so that now for every Y we create the X. So it'll be instead of going across, instead of going, I'll just show you. Here, now you can see it's all in a single row instead of in a single column, but that's because we create the X and then, or we create the, uh, 
the row and then finish it out then create this row and finish it out and then create this row and finish it out instead of creating the columns one by one and that seems to be the more standard approach for an inventory instead of going up and down if you want the vertical system that's fine leave it there but that gets us what we want so this brings me to the question how do I add items to the inventory the way I'm doing this here isn't a good idea I don't like the way we're doing this here it works but it's not good so what I'll quickly do is set up an add method in part six so stick around for that that should be up by tomorrow morning I'm hoping so at least uh, these will be up I'm, I'll try to get one up every single day during the weekdays okay so you notice there wasn't one on the weekend I just I don't like to do that on the weekend I want some free time so I mean this is mostly in my free time I do this stuff so if I, there's not one on the weekend you know it's because I just don't feel like doing that kind of work that day I do enjoy doing these but sometimes I just don't even want to think about it I don't even log into YouTube I just do nothing that has to do with this stuff but during the week you should expect one every single day and if there is not going to be one because there may not be that something may happen I may be sick I may have uh, had a car crash and in the hospital you never know right so I'll let you know if I'm able to or not able to so in the next part work on the add item method and that should be up uh, tomorrow so thank you for watching I hope you will follow me on Twitter at awful media I hope you will leave a like on this video if you like this video I know there wasn't much to it I know it was a bit uh, and it felt a bit sloppy to me but it is I'm exhausted okay so leave a like if you like it leave me a comment and let me know what you liked about it I guess subscribe if you want some more my name is Austin and I will see you next time